phases of embedded system. This video talks about the various development phases of embedded system. A phase representation of the embedded design life cycle. The different phases of development. Phase 1, product specification is to define the full functionality of the system to be designed along with the performance requirement. Phase 2, partitioning of the design into its software and hardware components. Designing the hardware for an embedded system is more than just selecting the right processor and gluing it to a few peripherals. Hardware software partitioning is the key part of designing an embedded system. You don't just pick a processor, design the hardware and give it to the software team. The partitioning choice has significant impact on the project cost, development time and risk. Phase 3. Iteration and refinement of the partition. Redesigning a hardware element is considerably more serious than finding a software defect. The fundamental problem is you can't debug your system until the hardware is available to work with. Phase 4. Independent hardware and software design task. The rule of thumb is to decide if 70% of the software can be reused. If so, do not change the processor. Most companies will not change processor unless there is something seriously deficient with the current architecture. Hardware design. Once the architecture is set and processor has been selected, the next step is hardware design, component selection, Verilog and VHDL coding, synthesis, timing, analysis and physical design of the chip and boards. The hardware design team will generate some important data for software teams such as the CPU address maps and the register definition for all software programmable registers. Software design. Once the memory map is defined and the hardware registers are documented, work begins to develop many different kind of software. Example including bootstrap code to start up the CPU and initialize the system, hardware diagnostics, real-time operating system, device driver and application software. During this phase, tools for compilation and debugging are selected and coding is done. Phase 5. Integration of the hardware and software components. The most crucial step in embedded system design is the integration of hardware and software. Two important concepts of integrating hardware and software are verification and validation. These are the final steps to ensure that a working system meets the design requirements. Verification. Does it work? This is answered by series of product testing and releases. Testing is important when performance is key. Good tools are critical to project success like in-circuit emulator, logic analyzers, ROM monitors, simulators are needed to make sure system does not have hardware or software bugs. Validation. Did we build the right thing? Validation aims to confirm that the requirement in area such as functionality, performance and power are satisfied. This concludes that the architecture is correct and the system is performing optimally. Phase 6. Product testing and release. Once hardware and software are validated and verified, which confirms that working system meets the design requirement and can be released to the customer. Phase 7. Ongoing maintenance and upgrades. Figure shows the fundamental software development phases followed while designing softwares. Requirements. Determines what software has to do. The process of embedded software Design generally starts with a set of requirements for what the product must do and ends with a working product that meets all the requirements. 
capturing the correct requirements get the project off to a good start minimize the chances of further product modification and ensures there is a market for the product if it is designed and built good products solve real needs have tangible benefits and are easy to use analysis determines what the system or software has to do design how the system or software will satisfy these requirements implementation doing it that is implementing the system or software code writing debugging testing and integration of the subsystems maintenance using it that is using the system or software hardware software co design methodology as discussed in earlier video that designing of embedded system are subjected to many different types of constraints like timing size weight power consumption reliability and cost the main components found in embedded systems include some or all of the following software firmware asic general purpose or domain specific processor core based asic ASIP memory FPGA analog circuit and sensors hence the design of complex embedded systems is a difficult problem requiring designers with skills and experience in order to identify the best solution today's design approach is hardware software code design hardware software code design allows meeting system level objectives by exploiting the synergism of hardware and software through their concurrent design by synchronizing the two processors that is hardware and software aims to provide a unified view of the system in all the design phases advantage early validation due to synergism of hardware and software prevents unnecessary design iterations modifications can be immediately reflected and do not require too much of recoding thus less development time is required simulation verification and validation processes enable faster review of a large number of test cases and thus results to efficient design case study blood pressure is a major indicator of the health of a person and is one of the four vital signs blood pressure monitors these monitoring system uses oscillometry or pulse transmit time method for non invasive and continuous blood pressure monitoring a pressure cuff and pump along with a transducer are used to measure blood pressure and heart rate in three phases inflation measurement and deflation also included are lcd selection button memory recall power management and usb interface the digital measurements of pressure and heart rate are performed by the microprocessor measurements results are stored in e square prom or flash memory as a data log that can be uploaded to a pc via usb or wireless connection the analog circuit is used to amplify both dc and ac components of the output signal of pressure transducer so that we can use the mcu to process the signal and obtain useful information about the patient's health power management converts input power from the alkaline or rechargeable batteries to run various functional block Let's look at another case study. A smoke detector is a device that senses smoke, typically as an indicator of fire, and issues audible or visual alarm for the detector. Smoke detectors are typically housed in a disc-shaped 
plastic enclosure about 150 mm in diameter and 25 mm thickness but the shape can vary by the manufacturer or product line. Most smoke detectors work either by optical detection that is photoelectric or by physical process that is ionization while others use both detection methods to increase sensitivity to smoke. Smoke detectors in large commercial, industrial and residential buildings are usually powered by a central fire alarm system which is powered by the building power with a battery backup. However, in many housing, a smoke alarm is often powered only by a single disposable battery. MSP430 microcontrollers are used very popularly in these applications to get highest battery lifetime, more than 10 years. With its ultra low power features and cost optimization with integrated analog features like built-in operational amplifiers and ADC.